Hello there and a very good evening to you. Many thanks for joining us on Super Screen News at SEX, broadcasting to you live from Lagos. I am Adenike Oye Ajiboye. Ekiti State Governor Ayodele Fayoshe has reiterated call for the resignation of President Mohamedou Buhari. The governor discussed this in a statement made by his special assistant on public communications and new media, Lebi Olainka. Fayoshe cited insecurity and economic problems in the country as evidence of what he described as the president's cluelessness and inability to steer the ship of the country. He also said the abduction of over 100 pupils of the government girls' technical college, Dabchi Yoba State, and the recent report of the Transparency International are enough for the president to resign. Governor Fayoshe described those urging President Buhari to seek re-election as being selfish, saying they do not have the interests of Nigerians at heart. The federal government delegation has visited the Maturu Yoba State to meet with the state government officials and the principal of the government science and technical college, Adapchi, where over a hundred students have been declared missing. The representatives are calling on the federal government to increase military personnel in the area to guard against recurrence of such attack. This is the second time in four days that a federal government delegation would visit Yobe State over the issue of the missing Dafchi girls. The representatives of Minister of Information Lai Mohammed, Minister of Interior Abdurrahman Dambazal, Brunei State Governor Kashim Shatima, a district head of Dafchi Kalachla, Yoroma Kamba, and elders and politicians. Meanwhile, the defense headquarters has denied allegations that its troops were withdrawn a few days before the abduction of schoolgirls in Dabchi, Yobe State. The Director of Defense Information, Brigadier General John Ajim, who discussed this to journalists, said there is no truth in the allegation. Ajim said that the military has been in the location that is about 30 kilometers to the school before the attack was launched. Meanwhile, Senate leader Hamid Lawan, representing Yubin North, said the terrorists must have struck when they saw that there were security lapses in Dabchi. Hamid expressed concerns that the attack was a setback to girl-child education because many girls would be reluctant to go to school now. An appeal has been made to Nigerians not to ignore of victims of human trafficking in the country. This appeal was made at an anti-human trafficking community awareness program organized by Salvation Army to sensitize Nigerians on the dangers of the menace. It is no news that Nigerian women and children are subjected to trafficking in persons to other West and Central African countries for forced labor and forced prostitution. Just recently, the federal government rescued some Nigerians from Libya. To curtail this act in Nigeria, these stakeholders were brought together by the Salvation Army Nigeria Territory to sensitize Nigerians on the ills and implications of human trafficking. The recruitment, transportation, transfer, harboring or receipt of persons by means of the threats or use of force or other forms of coercion of adoption, of fraud, of deception, of the abuse of power, or of a position of vulnerability, or of the giving or receiving of payment, or benefit to achieve the concept of a person having control over another person for the purpose of exploitation. Human trafficking is a modern day slavery. It is a situation where human beings are exploited, where the labor of 
Nigerians, Africans are exploited, both sexually, a form of labor exploitation. The, our aim is to bring in different stakeholders and workers in the space to work collaboratively and to share ideas, knowledge, experiences, so that we can be stronger together in fighting this menace in our society. We understand that we can't do it alone. It will take a multi-pronged approach and a multi-agency approach to really fight it effectively. While these stakeholders were unanimous in their submission, that poverty is a major cause of human trafficking, they speak on possible solutions to the menace. The bane of this is poverty. People are lured into traveling abroad, into sex working for money in order you know, to take care of themselves. And they don't see anything wrong in it. And we're saying no that in Nigeria there should be a stop to that and hence this conference so that when people are sensitized and everybody all hands are joined together all of us will fight this ill which is now a trend. Human trafficking uh, scenarios both in, in country and cross-border and the most important thing is it requires involvement of the uh, community, families and the uh, government and civil society organizations in resolving the push uh, factors, the pull factors and the uh, operation of the account, uh, traffickers and smugglers in the country. The most important thing is for us not only to rescue from the clutches of the exploiters, victims of human trafficking, but us to see a process of proper reintegration into the society that victims are rescued. They are made to go through a system of vocational training and then they are empowered and reintegrated into the society. According to the United Nations Education, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, Nigeria is one of the leading African countries in human trafficking. In view of this, the time is right for awareness to be raised among citizens on the dangers of human trafficking. And now, the National Economic Council NEC Committee on Farmers and Hitsman Clashes has visited Zamfara on a fact finder mission over security challenges in the state. Leading the committee, the chairman, Ebony State Governor Dave Umahi, said Vice President Yumi Oshibajo constituted the committee on behalf of the federal government. Umahi said the committee is expected to interact with government and major stakeholders in the state to realize its mission. The Nigerian army says troops in Bruno have killed five Boko Haram insurgents and captured a top commander of the group in the ongoing operation in Sambisa Forest in the Lake Chad Basin. A Deputy Director of Army Public Relations, Colonel Oyama Nwachiko of Operation Lafia Dole, who discussed this in a statement, said troops also rescued three civilians, recovered vehicles and high caliber ammunition in various operations in the past two days. Nwanchiko said the troops engaged and neutralized a number of fleeing insurgents while attempting to escape the military blocking position in one of the cleared enclaves. He also said the troops also recovered one a gill rifle magazine, a one life jacket, a light machine gun, a mental link, four rounds of anti-aircraft ammunition, four rounds of 7.62 mm NATO ammunition, and three rounds of 7.62 special ammunition. The police in River State has discovered a baby factory in the state. The owner of the baby factory was paraded by the police during its usual suspect parade of the command in the state. Find out more details in this report. Speaking with newsmen, the state's commissioner of police, Zaki Ahmed, represented by the deputy commissioner of police in charge of the administration, Zaira Okoro, said the monitoring unit acted on credible intelligence information that the suspects conspired to sell a two months old baby boy. Conspiracy and child trafficking. Operatives of the IGP monitoring unit, led by ACP Bennett Igwe, 
acting on credible intelligence, arrested the following persons, namely, Mkechi Uzuemene, female, Rosalind Oke, female, Mwamurita, female. The owner of the baby factory, known as Mercy Home Orphanage, Ngozi Egeonu, claimed that the place is duly registered with the Corporate Affairs Commission and equally debunked the allegation of it being a baby factory. In December, a girl, that one girl with the woman that she said that is her senior sister, her mom's senior sister, that she's an orphan, no mother, no father. She has three children out of wedlock. And then the one that pregnanted her, the one she's carrying, she doesn't know the person. And the baby was so sick, dying. She said she doesn't want this baby to die, that we should accept this baby from her. Not at the beginning, not at the beginning. I, I made the woman, I made the woman, and he will go block me for this woman. And this, and this woman take care of me for, for this embellishment. Like, I made this woman that instead of this baby to die, let me uh, let me carry the baby, and this is the person that will, that will take care of the baby. So the woman of God for me. So the woman will take us to make me rush the baby to the hospital, we'll to go to, we'll go to this in police, police. From police, we we'll go to court. They snap us there. They snap us in that. The Deputy Commissioner of Police called on residents to be vigilant about their surroundings and cooperate with the police to read the states of crimes. And now the Federal Road Safety Corps, FRSA, says there is no need for data capturing while applying for renewal of driver's license. The FRSC Lagos State Sector Commander, Hygienius Omeja Eko, discussed this to journalists, said the agency departed from the old system long time ago. Omeja said recapturing of data would only happen when people want to change their passport photographs or change some variables stated at the initial stage in the data. He also said choice of coming to capture is people's own as long as they have their database at the initial stage and they're ready in the system that they don't need to be captured any longer. You're still watching Super Screen News at 6. We'll take a short break here and when we return we'll bring you business news. Stay with us. Well, it's so glad to have you back now in business news. The Department of Petroleum Resources, the EPR in Ugo State, says about 73 petrol stations have been sealed off for various offenses. The head of operations, the EPR Ugo State, Maynard Osage, who discussed this to journalists, said the offenses are ranging from under dispensing holding and selling the product above the approved pump price of petroleum products. Osage called on other field stations and stakeholders to adhere strictly to the rules and regulations of the agency. And our Minister of Water Resources, Suleiman Adamu, says about $14 billion is needed to carry out an inter basin transfer of water to save the receding Lake Child Basin. Adamu, who discussed this to journalists during an interview in Abuja, explained that members of the Lake Child Basin Commission, LCBC, have agreed to come up with solutions on how to save the lake. He also said a study carried out by a Chinese firm in 2012 showed that it was possible to conduct an interbasin transfer of water from the Congo River Basin to the Lake Chad. According to him, the current situation of the lake posed a serious security risk to member countries. He however noted that lack of activities around the lake had fueled Boko Haram activities in the region. Still talking business news, the Minister of Finance, Kemi Adeoshu, will on March 1 lead a federal government delegation to a stakeholders' symposium on the voluntary assets and income declaration scheme in Kaduna. The symposium is being hosted by the Kaduna State Government in attendance of the symposium or the State Governor, Nasir Arafai, Executive Chairman, Federal Inland Revenue Service, Labatuli Fowler, the members of the Kajuna State Executive Council and House of Assembly and traditional rulers. 
According to a statement issued by the Federal Internal Revenue Service, FRS, it said the Bates Symposium is aimed at promoting greater public understanding of the procedure of the tax amnesty scheme. FRS said the meeting is also aimed at forging mutually beneficial cooperation between the government and diverse socioeconomic interest groups for the success of the Bates scheme. And that's it in business news. We'll take another short break after which we'll bring on news from a foreign scene and the sports. Stay with us. <laughs> Well, it's so glad to have you back now in international news. Syrian government forces have launched the ground and air offensive in eastern Ghouta hours after the United Nations Security Council voted unanimously in favor of a resolution calling for a 30-day ceasefire in Syria. President Bashar al-Assad's forces began fighting opposition groups from multiple fronts in the rebel-held enclave near Damascus, while Syrian warplanes continued to shell the besieged area for the eighth consecutive day. Eastern Ghouta is the last remaining rebel-held area east of Damascus and has been under siege by Syrian President Bashar al-Assad forces in an attempt to drive rebel forces. Out. A planned visit by Mexican President Eric Pena Nieto to the White House has been called off after a heated phone conversation with the United States of America President Donald Trump. President Nieto, who is planning his first official visit for either this month or early March to Washington since President Trump's inauguration but it fell through after their failure to find common ground on a long-standing dispute over Trump's proposed border wall. Report says the two leaders have agreed that now was not the right time for a visit, but that they would have their teams continue to talk, discuss and work together. And in sports news, the national wrestling team, the Hope of Nigeria, has vowed to continue with the boycott of their training camp in protest of their non-payment of their accumulated allowances for various African and international wrestling championships. The athletes, through their representatives, Amos Daniel, male captain, and Blessing Oguru female captain, had written to the Nigerian Wrestling Federation stating reasons for taking such drastic action. They claimed they are being treated as second-class citizens in the country. The letter, dated 17th February 2018, was jointly signed by the two athletes stating, I read and I quote, we wish to inform you that we are boycotting the Commonwealth camp due to non-payment of our allowances as promised. End of quote. And finally, on Super Screen News at 6, still talking sports. Report says Canadian skier David Duncan has been arrested on charges of stealing a car in South Korea where he was competing at the Winter Olympics. Duncan's wife, Marja, and manager Willie Rain were also arrested. A police official... Official in charge of international crime at Gangwon Provincial Police Agency to journalists that a Canadian athlete, his wife and manager, had tampered with a car. They had gotten into the car in Pyeongchang, which had been left unlocked and unoccupied with the engine running. The police official, who did not identify the suspects by name, said the manager drove off with the car before it was stopped by police. Reports, however, say Rain was charged with impaired driving. The three were released but restricted from leaving South Korea. Well, that is a package in Super Screen News at 6. Thanks for being in company. Remember to join us at 8 for more news updates. As always, I am Adinike 
Good evening.